and then we're actually going to get to talk to uh, one of the best pizza places in Tucson, and that's Rocco's Pizza. Uh, mm. I'm biased, maybe, but uh, I, that's what I grew <clears throat> up with eating in Tucson. So here we go. Uh, well, I think we should let everyone know that you have a history with Chicago. Let's not we forget about it, okay? Um, <laughs> The Tucson Tasty Show is brought to you by Kiki Rogers of Country Financial Insurance, Ferro Premium Beef, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Your Financial Guy, Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First Arizona, Arizona Hatters, and Allegra Marketing Print and Mail. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Uh, you can check us out live on YouTube or Facebook, and that's the t- or the Tucson Tasty Show. It'll pop up, and uh, and if you have a question, call into uh, the studio and listen to us or and, uh, ask us live at five two zero seven nine zero two zero four zero. That's five two zero seven nine zero twenty forty, and uh, maybe Rock will give us uh, the secret uh, secret recipe to the sauce. Sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Beautiful. We, we will get the sauce today. <laughs> so, uh, Joshua, good to see you, Chef. Good yeah, afternoon. You, how you doing? Doing all right. A little wet. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got for the uh, tips and tricks for the kitchen today? So, what I want to talk about today is uh, like food waste. Yes. So, uh, one, I have a question though for everybody. When you guys go to Costco or Fries or Walmart stuff like that, do you guys get the rotisserie chicken there? No. Every no? time. Man, especially with my kids, my, they just want to grab it, so I, I, I get it every now and then. So uh, what do you do with the bones when you get done? You just throw it away? Stock. Is he, well, he's yeah, already yeah. on it. That's I, exactly I, what I was yeah, going to talk I, about. I turn the chicken into like three or four bags of different kind of mm-hmm. meat. Shred it up a little and bit. Shred it up a little bit, and then the bones go in the freezer for next time I make stock. So, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. do the similar thing. Is like, do you, do you roast your bones afterwards? Like after you take it from the freezer, I'm way too lazy for that. But, <laughs> but no, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that just to get a little bit more of a little flap, uh, flavor in there, a little in depth. Same thing whenever if you're most of the restaurants that if you go uh, go to, they have like a dozen different vegetables, right? And what mm-hmm. you want to do is you want to use these vegetables in more than one dish. You don't want to just be like, oh, this is the only dish that we use the red onion in. Mm-hmm. Let's use it for all these extra things. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I was at this one restaurant where I was working at. They have uh, mushrooms, and they would only use the the button top, the top parts of the mushrooms. So they had all these hmm. stems and stuff like that. Wow. So at the end of the night, I'll come home with, like, a big bag of mushroom bottoms. Do you know what you could do with those mushrooms? You can make a lot uh, of some things. of the um, best food, like, I don't know, um, beef wellington, maybe? Throw it in some risotto. <laughs> risotto. <laughs> right. like, that's, like, that's still mushrooms, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing, I mean, there's no other flavor difference than the top and the bottom. It's just, no. oh, they the want the top to look pretty. The texture's almost the same. Yeah. Even, yeah. Well, especially <laughs> if you're going to blend it up or something like that, or you like uh, he was talking about cooking it into, into a stock, because that's what I end up doing. Is like I just go ahead and make a vegetable stock and then freeze that later. But or like he, he was talking about, just go ahead and freeze it right from the start. So it's mm. always a good thing. Tasty. You know, one of my favorite things after Thanksgiving with the turkey is taking the mm-hmm. turkey bones and mm-hmm. some of the leftover stuff and making uh, kind of a stock and then also like a turkey soup with it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like, like a little white chicken chili. I did one with turkey a while back because mm-hmm. you got sometimes uh, it's just me and my kids most of the time. So I got a big old turkey. You gotta have to use something. Turkey enchiladas. Oh yeah. Oh stuff yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, Thanksgiving's one of our favorites. We do uh, turkey pot pie, mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. but we do it in a giant cast iron skillet uh, that uh, has enamel on it. It's traditional, and it's only time that I ever get turkey pot pie because uh, producer Tina hates turkey hot pot pie. So, sure, <laughs> I, I want to do a pizza pot pie. Ooh, hint, hint. What, isn't oh. that just called a cannoli? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like where it's actually where it actually make it like the the crust is on top. So it's like the pie shells. So it's like almost like a reverse pizza. So you take the, oh. you take your little I upside mean, down pizza. You well, know, there's there actually a, there are a couple places that do pl- that. There's a place up in Chicago. It's like uh, Chicago Grinder and Pub or something like that. Yeah, That's but, where yeah, I saw it from. Chicago Grinder Company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, years ago. And they use brick cheese too. It's it's a yeah, really interesting. That. It's a, I've I've eaten there numerous times. It's a crazy place, and there's no other place like it. Is it pizza? I don't know what it is, but it's delicious. <laughs> upside down pizza. But, Highly edible. Yeah. I've tried to do it a few times, but the sauce gets like so watery at the bottom, and sometimes the cheese doesn't do it. It's like I just don't have the right oven. 
So a good stock, you know, you, you bring up a very good point. You know, you can use that stock for almost anything. And uh, if you go into the kitchens, professional kitchens, you always have stock on hand mm -hmm. and uh, they're always making stock. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I know somebody that's um, introducing some fish into the market and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the restaurants want uh, the fish gutted and gilled, but they want the whole fish. They want the head. They want the bones. They want mm -hmm. everything so that they can uh, do that fish stock and then they can do so many different things with that fish stock they can re reduce it down uh they can i mean it just it's endless right just like with chicken or uh beef and you know it's so many amazing things so uh i agree with you 100 percent. you know waste is uh you can produce waste quite a bit right and then what you're not using you can grind up and uh put in your garden and let your plants have at it a little compost <laughs> yeah if you got chickens then it just gets Ooh. turned into eggs you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. yeah another thing with the uh some of the stock is like you let it cook a little bit longer then uh you get what's like uh japanese like tanaksu mm. i always say that word mm -hmm. wrong but it's it's basically uh the bone broth of it and right. it gives a nice little clear uh not clear but it's like a cloudy broth but it's so delicious whenever you do it right right, right. sometimes mm. it takes a little bit of time Sure. If you've worked mm -hmm. in like a French style kitchen, they have demi glace on on hand all the time, and that's roasted bones and and vegetables like cooked down into like basically a gel, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's just instant stuff, you know. Instant flavor mm -hmm. added. Make some fried rice. Throw a little bit of gel. There we go. So, so wait, wait, wait. So they 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 use a stock and then they put a little uh, gelatin in it, well, and well, that's what no, they're well, using. No, all the gelatins from usually a demi glace is usually veal bones, and mm. you, you roast them. Um, Good and long, and then cook it with some vegetables down into into just a really rich, really rich gravy. And then yeah, mm. it's yeah, it's a portable soup. You know, it's a chunk of something that they, you can use to flavor other stuff. It kind of oh comes gosh. like a Jello kind of type. Right, type sounds so yeah. incredible. There's, there's so, so much Jello flavor in it. Yeah. So. Mm. My, my, I, I, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I uh, th this show just makes you hungry. Luckily, I there's a so. pizza out in the lobby. Uh, well, right? that's <laughs> for the third segment. But, um, all right, so uh, Joshua, tell us a little bit about, um, or a little bit more about. Uh, so, so when you're taking it, how long do you boil for? <clears throat> so usually, hmm, all depends on how much flavor and stuff you're wanting to go. Mm -hmm. because the, the longer you boil it, and actually it's more of you bring it to a boil and then you reduce it down right. to more like a, say about medium low, because mm -hmm. you don't want it to keep continuous boiling because all that the extra heat. So, so it's a it, simmer. Yeah. It's, okay. So you're going to, a little bit, it takes a little bit of longer process. And now this, this is when you want to go throw like some of your rosemary or thyme, some of your, maybe a bay leaf or something like in there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's always better to use more of a fresh thing instead of like your dried ingredients because dried ingredients they actually do have a lifespan on it most of the time you know you go home but like, hey that's been sitting on there a year or two years you got you got a big old thing of garlic powder or something but mm -hmm. the problem is like you have to use more and more just to get that garlic flavor to just have something more of a, a fresh garlic instead he's like you could just use that so it's like um it, it, like I said, it all depends on time, and most of the time you want to cook to temperature, not to time. So you could look at a recipe and it says cook for 45 minutes, but next thing you know, you're cooking an hour 15. Because but would you use time? Uh, I mean, the spice, the uh, time. time. <laughs> yeah, that's the time. Yeah, time, time. I'm sorry, I yeah. couldn't. I, that was like <laughs> low hanging joke. fruit. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, it, it all depends on what uh, flavors you're trying to get in there. Because they, if you're going right. to roast that the bones in there, and you want a more of a darker thing, you can throw uh, like diced up um, carrots, onions, celery right. into your pan that you're also roasting with. So some of that extra broth get in there, and you can you can take a little bit of what they call a, a brown stock, which mm -hmm. is actually use a little bit of tomato, like tomato paste, mm -hmm. get into the skillet and stuff like that, and then you slowly add your water into it. So then uh, it's not you don't you don't get that little all the chunks of tomato end up getting away because of the pace and stuff, but you get all the extra little bits and stuff. And then of course, what you're going to want to do is uh, after a while, you start seeing a white foam appear on top. You just take a little skimmer and you skim that stuff off. You don't want that into your soup. Mm. Yeah. That'll just boil into it and be little, little weird little chunks in yeah. there. So but most of the time off. everybody's shooting for it. Like you want that clear stock in there. Oh yeah. Right. That's mm -hmm. funny about the fish stocks. Like, go ahead. So what, what is one stock that you always have in, in your kitchen? Well, at work, we, 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 um, 
we throw our chi- our raw chicken wings through the oven with a little pan of water, mm-hmm. like like on a sheet pan, just to par cook them. That way, um, you know, get some of the moisture out of them and stuff. So we have basically this this really light chicken stock all the time. So we just boil that down with some some vegetable scraps and turn it into a Ooh. good chicken broth. That's what all our soups that aren't vegetable soups are based. Oh, okay. On. So and it's it's you know easy and you could do that with like the bones from your Costco chicken and stuff too. Fair enough. So would you mm-hmm. always have chicken stock uh, on hand at your house as well then? Yeah, Chef that's, that's, that's mostly the one that I usually use. I mean, Got it. a lot of people in the Tucson area, I mean, vegan, so you could just do a vegetable mm-hmm. thing instead. Yeah, and if you're making vegetable stock, you don't have to usually cook it nearly as long as no. extracting the gelatin out of the bones and stuff. Mm. Like, usually 20 minutes is enough to get a light stock, but okay. that'll add some flavor to any soup. Uh, all the vegetables mm-hmm. softened up, Beautiful. so enough for you. Right. Yeah, as long as it's if, if you can smash <laughs> it with a it. fork, mm-hmm. it's done. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, I'm Wesley Source, your host of the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll be right back with more of uh, well, with Cody of Network Outdoors and <laughs> Rocco and uh, Joshua. If you want to hang out, um, I, we'll talk more with you. And uh, thank you to our amazing sponsors: Kiki Rogers of Country Financial Insurance, Verrall Premium Beef, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Your Financial Guy Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First Era. Arizona, Arizona Hatters, and Allegra Marketing Print and Mail. Stay tasty, Tucson. Welcome back to the Tucson Tasty Show. I'm your host, Wesley Source, and we are in, uh, we're having a great show today. It's rainy outside. It's kind of nice and sleepy, but uh, we're having a blast here at the studio. So um, don't forget to check us out on YouTube at uh, the Tasty Show 520. And if you want to check us out on Facebook, uh, you can also do that at uh, the Tucson Tasty Show. Um, you can actually make comments, and uh, we'll put them right, right up on the screen. Uh, don't forget to like or follow, friend, share, subscribe, and repeat. Did I miss one? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll take it all. Okay. You know? <laughs> Even the dislikes. The little arrow <laughs> thing just hit that. <laughs> yes, you hit that arrow and um, and and stay updated. And if uh, you miss out on that, uh, or if you just want a good old website, go to the show dot com and uh, stay stay up to date. Um, don't forget to sign up for our subscription email subscription, and we'll make sure to get those events out to you. And uh, we do coffee with the Tasty Show every week on Friday. Uh, we're super excited to uh, highlight all the coffee shops in Tucson and mm-hmm. uh, everything that they're doing. We have plenty um, and and some amazing coffee roasters in Tucson as well. And, uh, you know, on top of uh, all the other food and everything else, I mean, we, we're, we're, we got everything at this point. Very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> we're all set, man. And, uh, and more to come. Um, I just, it's amazing the things that are happening in Tucson. It's, uh, it's great. You know, when I was growing up here, um, it just, it didn't feel like there was a lot, but now, I mean, it's endless. I cannot right. get to everywhere that I need to get to uh, and and try the food, but we try. And uh, thank you for being here today, uh, Cody, Network Outdoors. Uh, you have that beautiful shirt on. It, tell yeah. us a little bit about Network Outdoors really quick. Well, Network Outdoors is a private membership and networking organization, uh, soon to be across nine states we take people who are like-minded individuals like the great outdoors off-roading camping fishing hunting shooting all that jazz bring them together for monthly mixers and then special events i mean <clears throat> we just had our first event up at outside of the united states up in canada beginning of the month Ooh. and uh coming up soon we got some cqb shoot house trainings up in scottsdale but i'm really excited now you are excited because we have a network outdoors uh Expo and Wild Game Dinner coming up in October. That's right. October, Sounds what's awesome. the date? October, October 4th. And, and it's th- going to be out at the Pima County Fairgrounds? Uh, yes. Yes. You And you and me will be over there Wednesday confirming details and everything else for everybody. Yes, we so will. So if you are interested in coming and checking it out, the dinner does cost. It is tickets, but the expo will be open to the public for a few hours before the dinner. Beautiful. And uh, one of the cool things about the uh, dinner is it's actually in one of their AC buildings. So yes. it, it, it might be a little bit warm outside, but then we'll be able to escape into the uh, the cool air. Yes. And I think we're we're excited because we're bringing back uh, Seth, uh, Chef Seth Meddy. Um, he helped us cook our last one and he'll be out there cooking. So you can come check him out, check out the food uh, before the dinner served. So we're gonna we're gonna be able to talk to him, or is he gonna be too busy? He'll probably be a little busy, but I know you'll be over there with a camera and trying to interview him, anyways. Fair enough. 
And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see about getting um, all the equipment out there and uh, everything else. We're we're looking at partnerships with a couple um, uh, appliance companies. Yep. And uh, yeah, no, so it's, it'll be a lot of fun. So Wild Game Dinner October fourth, and uh, that's going to be at the Pima County uh, Shooting Range Fairground area. Yep. So we'll be over there, and we already got some some people. I'm not going to announce everything. Uh, yet on who's going to be out there, but if well, you got to tune in ne- next week, and we'll give you updates as we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we got Super some people exciting. who are going to come showcase some products and stuff. So if you like the great outdoors, this is a place for you to come check it out. Awesome. So we have uh, Rocco of well, actually, all right. Let's let's try this one again. Welcome to Anthony Rocco de Grazia. Yeah. Of Rocco's Little Chicago Pizza, better known as Rocco. Sure. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's good <laughs> Good to be here. I like this show. Well, thank you very much for coming in. and we're, <laughs> it's, it's uh our honor and uh, pleasure to have you here today. So let's talk pizza. All how, right. How did you get started in pizza? It was always my favorite food. Um, when <laughs> the neighborhood, uh, I grew up on the south side of Chicago and in very... Uh, you know, blue collar working class neighborhood surrounded by like steel mills and stuff. And we had like probably at least half a dozen uh, family owned pizzerias that you could choose from mm. within a couple of square miles, you know, like there weren't any chains. It just didn't exist back in the seventies and eighties. And I grew up eating pizza and we, every, every family had their favorite, like you'd go to your friend's house and they'd order a different pizza, you know, and everybody would have their battle. They would battle, which was their favorite. And it was always my favorite. And then Back in, the, back in the 70s, there was a segment on Sesame Street, which was like some Italian guys with like typical dit dit at the music and stuff of a guy <laughs> making a pizza. Like it was just a short a short segment that they had. I, 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 I remember. And, yeah, and the dough around. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just like, this is something that people do. Like it, <laughs> it blew my mind. And I forgot about it, but my first job was in a pizzeria in my neighborhood. So it was like, I don't know. It just worked out pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. So Southside Chicago, and uh, how did you get to Tucson? Uh, I moved out here. to. Uh, I was going to try to go to grad school and stuff. I have a degree in anthropology. I was going to be an archaeologist and stuff. Hmm. When, I, when I got here, <laughs> though, everybody who went to Pima for a semester knew all the professors that were doing contract archaeology and had digs going on. I just, I just was like, I was outmatched and underqualified. And so I went back in the kitchen, which, which is my first job. When I was in college, I, I worked in a pizzeria. Uh, my first job here was at the Bum Steer. Well, may may mm. she rest in peace. Mm-hmm. And, and then I uh, yeah, worked at a couple pizzerias and restaurants here in town and um, started making pizza at home. And my friends were like, you should open a pizzeria. Your pizza's good. And that's what happened. <laughs> And, much. and you opened in 98, yeah. um, and uh, which is really great over there on... Um, yeah, we're at 2707 East Broadway, so it's like Broadway. between Tucson and Country Club on Broadway. Yes. It was across from the old El Parador and stuff like that, you know, like a very um, mid-century modern area that was neglected and affordable, and, but close to downtown and the students. Close and enough, yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted a freestanding building so that... You know, we'd had some parking and stuff like that. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind Ro- or, uh, Rocco's Pizzeria? Was it just, I just were wanted, you working? It, I, or, I wanted two things. Yes. My goals were simple. I had no business plan. It was like I wanted to make the best pizza in town, mm. and I wanted a, a environment that I wanted to work in and uh, <laughs> didn't <laughs> suck. And I think we did that. I guess. You no, know? absolutely. Yeah. Every time I go in there, I mean, it's a happy an- er, atmosphere. You have employees that have worked for you. For decades. No, yes. Yeah, and, seriously. I mean, loyalty is a, a big thing. So, And right. that's what I love seeing when I go into uh, restaurants. When I see a lot of turnover, I, you know, there's obviously something going on. Right. Well, well, the last suspect co- with any business. Yeah, but the last couple of years are, are we're definitely an outlier just because, like, everybody had turnover. It didn't matter if you were mm, the yeah, best fair. place on earth. But, yeah, like, re- realistically, we've, we have way lower than the national average. Had turnovers, which is great. That's awesome. That is Institutional so, knowledge, you know. That's right. great. That's what you want. Absolutely. So yeah, you don't want that brain drain. No, maybe. man. Yeah, and like I can't train everybody. It's just it's not something you should do twenty five years into your business. You know that you that I have to curate every aspect of it all the time. So oh, fair. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so tell us, uh, you get a new location coming October. Yeah, we're, uh, we're November? moving to twenty. We're moving from twenty seven oh seven to twenty five fifty five East Broadway. Mm-hmm. So we're closer to downtown and closer to I ten by like 200 yards but like <laughs> but the, the the best of it is we're going to be Who's in counting? a newly rehabbed uh mid-century modern plaza with a lot of parking and a 
twice as big everything. So we're going to have 99 seats inside, 20, oh, wow. 28 outside, a bigger bar, and, and the kitchen's going to be designed what I want and twice as big. So we can do a lot more stuff, including catering, which we can't do now because we just don't have any room. So does that mean we're getting pizzas twice as big? Yeah, the tweet, yeah we're, we're, we're not going to be mamas. I can't do like a, a, a you know, bedspread size, size pizza, but yeah. yeah. We're, we're just, we're, we're, just, we're, we're, you, we're all excited. First of all, we're well, excited. It's gonna, bigger, twice as big. Right. So twice well, as thick. We're, we're excited that the new kitchen is going to be air conditioned because this oh, is, wow, this is yeah. the last year Ooh. of the swamp cooled kitchen. That's and man, it's no, already, going to make a difference. It's already you. brutal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were uh, filming at Zio Pepe uh, last week, and right. uh, my goodness, it was just, it, it was... It's rough in there, man. Mm-hmm. I, I walked in, and I was like, do you guys have, like, IVs hooked up? How are, are you yeah. stay alive back <laughs> yeah. here? Baby powder. So I, I feel that. Um, and then, so that's October. Or do you guys have a final uh, final we, date for that yet? We don't know yet because it's there's a, the vagaries of construction are, of course. are elusive. Right. So <laughs> uh, we're hoping by, like, let, and by the end of October. Maybe before that. We'll sure, see. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, hopefully October twentieth by October twentieth, so you can open for my birthday and I yes. come down there that's, and uh, that's celebrate our goal. with you. That's our goal. <laughs> yes, we'll have a dunk tank, Shots so fired. you can you can throw balls and dunk the Tucson Tasty Show right. host. It's Done. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> that'll right. be the that, that that'll be ramp up for uh, some other amazing <laughs> things uh, coming right. towards the end of the year, but uh, that we can't talk about yet. But we're 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 getting there. It's super exciting. Uh, all the fun stuff. In fact, uh, the first episode of the uh, the Tucson Tasty Show will air uh, July sixth. Uh, so just literally two weeks from today. Nice. Uh, I'm super excited and uh, panicky about making sure that everything's just right on that first episode. Yeah, that, you it, know what? It'll, you have it'll, experience with that too, don't you? It'll be what it. It'll <laughs> be what it is. Yeah. Just yeah. Fair enough. So so Rocco, we got a question that we got to ask. Sure. What is the one thing you keep in your kitchen? in home that you recommend everyone else have as a tip um, and trick? I would say Locatelli Romano cheese. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. It's, yes. the, it's the one my grandma used to get, and it has a specific flavor, and it's a huge flavor enhancer, and mm. it's a couple mm-hmm. bucks more, but it's not that much, right. and, and it'll last forever if it's wrapped tightly. So get, get some Locatelli Romano cheese. It's the real stuff. That is actually something that I always have in my kitchen as well. I agree nice. 100%. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm going to have to try this cheese. I'm Wesley Source, your host of the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll be right back with Tasty Bites with uh, the Tucson Tasty Show. And uh, thank you to our amazing sponsors, Kiki Rogers of Country Financial Insurance, Vero Premium Beef, Mafia Kitchen, your financial guy, Cody Peck, uh, Network Outdoors, Local First Arizona, Arizona Hatters, and Allegra Marketing Print and Mail. Stay tasty, Tucson. Welcome back to the Tucson Tasty Show. I'm your host, Wesley Source, and we're uh, about to dive into one of my favorite pizzas uh, with Rocco of Rocco's Little Chicago Pizzeria. And uh, we have Cody Peck here uh, from Network Outdoors. Uh, Thank you for being my um, guest co-host, permanent like permanent guest yep. co-host and uh we have kiki rogers <laughs> of kiki's keys or kiki's uh kiki rogers of country financial insurance absolutely hi guys hey thanks for jumping in today oh yeah. i'm so happy to be back yes yeah, so uh this is my favorite segment on the tucson tasty show because we get to talk about well, the food we get to uh, dive into some of the food right on. and uh really taste um and explain what we're tasting to the listeners so that they can come and try it out sure yeah um, well I, I we got a comment here okay real quick question what comment? is the best pizza in tucson Mm. Th- that's a and that's like saying what's the best taco in Tucson. Yeah, you you can't say that. <laughs> well, I'd say the best well, pizza. Is the Rocco's, best pizza is right here, right, right in here. front of us, Rocco's. Well, what, what's exactly the, the <laughs> pizza in front of you, right oh, yeah. here? If it's still warm and it's not from a national chain, there's the best pizza. In there Tucson. you go. There are some amazing pizzas <laughs> being made, and we've had Bailey's. We've had uh, we had. Oh, um, we had Zio Pepe's. In Zio here. Pepe. Zio uh, Pepe's. Last week we had that Patrick. Patrick was in here once he's 
gets his food truck back up and running. Yeah, yeah. yeah he had a good pizza when he was doing his location. Cool. But I agree, the best and pizza, the pizza is right in front of you, right. ready to be eaten. Like we just we just picked up two pizzas from Empire last night after the show. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, Empire is amazing. Uh, we got they, the elote pizza. Too. Elotes, oh my gosh. If you've been drinking the elote pizza, me and, and even if you haven't been, but especially. The t- t- Tikka Marcella, or Marcella <laughs> pizza, or t- yeah, t- Tikka Marcella. Really oh good my gosh, too. that one's so good. Yeah. What I want to know from Minnesota we, is, we do you him. have any pizza in town that has sauerkraut? No, we don't. No. Hmm. no. Sauerkraut. I don't think anybody you know, Empire Pizza would Minnesota be the guy thing. to talk to about right. that, we, uh, I think Empire Pizza. We had it, like, we did a pizza of the month. We do every month, and one of them had like bratwurst and sauerkraut on it. But that was years ago, in like a mustard glaze or something. That's great stuff right there. <laughs> so tell us, uh, what is the pizza of the month? Uh, the pizza of the month right now is our most popular, best-selling pizza of the month of all time, which is based on the Taco Upson from Ups, uh, Tacos Upson on uh, South 12th. Oh. So it's uh, carne asada, which we marinate and grill in-house, uh, grilled mushrooms, bacon, and green chilies. And then I have a chilta bean salsa that we serve with it, too. Ooh, so it's basically my. a tub of cheese with taco ingredients. Kind of it, like the heart attack deep dish. That you yeah, it's, yeah, no. yeah, it's there's no pizza <laughs> sauce and stuff. But yeah, it's it's going on our permanent menu at the at the Ooh. new location, and when we have more more room to grill carne asada, it's getting <laughs> smoky back there these days. But yeah, I can but imagine. that's really good, and and we sell a lot of them. So. Yes, I can imagine they're, they're yeah. So what did you bring us in? I brought the, okay. This if I see this on a ticket. I'll go out to the table and say, What's, what part of Chicago are you from? And I'm 92% oh of the time I'm right. So this is a, I'll put it on the, the camera thing, I guess. We'd say. This is a large, thin sausage sausage pizza. And this is what 90% of, or eight, I think 80% of the pizzas consumed within Chicago city <laughs> limits are, are uh, large, thin pizzas, and most of them are for, are just plain sausage. My or goodness, sausage are those sausage or meatballs? That's huge. Exactly. Yeah, this is sausage from Roma Imports. We, I was going to ask. We, we've been getting it made for us since we opened, and they spice it. We used to like buy their regular sausage and put more fennel and garlic in it, and then they're like, wait, you're doing that? We'll do that for you. Mm. So so they, they spice it for us, and that's typical of Chicago is we, there's a sweet... It's like a sweet sausage sweet with sausage. fennel in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Italian sausage. I mean, it's Italian sausage. Yeah. I, it's, is it if not it something have else? Fennel, well, the, the it's stuff not. they the, the <laughs> Roman imports regular sausage is based on a Sicilian sausage because the original owners were Sicilian, and it's it does not have garlic in it and has just a moderate amount of fennel. So yeah. Very basic and parsley. And I stuff. grew up with uh, Sicilian and Italian sausage. Right. So, yeah, I know yeah, it's very too, different. Man. My grandfather was from, uh, Sicilian, and my my grandmother was from North Italy or Northern Italy. So, sure. uh, naturally, they got divorced. But uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> um, it, we had some very different. <laughs> I right. think it was over the food, really. But <laughs> what part? What part of Sicily? Because my grandpa's from Sicily too. I. I I have it written down. I mean, okay, cool. it's this long name. Right. It's a little a village, and the family still owns the family house. Oh, so, that's so awesome, yeah. dude. And awesome. Uh, we've got to go back and visit them. Go. But, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, but Tasty so, and Show also Abroad, the cannolis. 2027. The cannoli, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Tasty Show Abroad. <laughs> yeah, uh, discovering go for it, dude. Sicily. No, wait, somebody did that already. Uh, <laughs> d- discovering Italy. No. <laughs> but what I'm noticing we'll, is we'll, we'll it's skip nice, over James May. thin crust. Yeah, but it's cut into squares. It's cut in squares. That's, that's the that's, that's the midwestern way. It. Like it it's is. not just Chicago. It's everywhere, basically west of I don't know the Allegheny Mountains all the way to St. Louis. That's what like, in Minnesota they cut in it in Minnesota. Too. Yes, in, in in Wisconsin, in Detroit, Detroit's okay. Detroit's well, Detroit's its own thing. Well, let, let's <laughs> dig into this before right, we cool. have yes, 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 serve us that. It, it may have cooled off a little bit. You know, cold. You know what? If it's cold not good when it's good cold, too. it's bad pizza. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah. If you can't if you can't eat it the next morning, right. Well, while we're uh, getting this divvied up, um, when you're or do you make your so- or your pizza dough in house? Oh yeah, we have two kinds. Actually, we have a different dough for our deep dish than our than our um, our thin pizza. Mm, okay. Yeah, the the deep dish pizza dough is uh, a lot shorter, which means there's a lot more fat in it. So okay. so so it's flakier when it cooks. And this is you know this is ba- your basic. This is basically like every other pizza dough, and it's just the way we you know cook it is a little different and stuff like that. It's like you know. It adds up. Here we all go. The, all the little things add up. Of course. No, 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 of course no. they do. Guys. And um, what is yeah, your 
What is your take on it, Cody? You, you, you've gotten the first bite. What do you think? This sausage is definitely does not hold back on it. The taste of this is definitely a great Italian sausage on this pizza. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. And th it's I'm saving these for me. I, I only get to eat these. This is the best piece the on the corner. pizza. The corners. These <laughs> yeah. are the ones that don't make it to your house because you eat them <laughs> while you're on the way home. So yeah, if, if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I love now, you have a nice um, light sauce to it mm -hmm. where then the toppings and the cheese really play in. The sauce doesn't take over. Right. But they balance very well. Right. And our sauce, like Chicago sauce is a lot higher spice than, like there's mm -hmm. some New York pizzerias where it's like, we use really great tomatoes, also sea salt. And that like, they're like, let's just, and then the rest of it's just the oven. It's like, and the <laughs> dough, right? But Chicago sauce is usually highly spiced. Some of them are really sweet. Like like exceptionally sweet, the like like brown sugars in the sauce and stuff, and those hmm. are those are definitely I don't know, an acquired taste if you haven't grown up with them. But I like a sweet sauce. It, ours is not a sweet sauce, but I like that too when I go back to Chicago. You know, what's your favorite place in Chicago to get pizza? Um, the I don't know, man. The the old place in my neighborhood uh, closed recently and has reopened, so I have to see if that's as good as it used to be. But I, I just tried new places, and I always try to get thin crust. Last time I was there, I finally got to Pequod's, which uh, I hadn't had since I was, like, 20. And it was still good, and it's deep. their deep dish is different than everybody else's. A little bit has caramelized edges and stuff. And, th and that's one of the places I recommend to people. Well, I love, though, that you're representing the thin crust because a lot of people do associate the Chicago deep dish. Right. But that thin crust really has... Um, a, a nice substance to it, and right. it doesn't have that cardboard it, that right. you get with the. It's, it's like this. Uh, un yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> since we use a conveyor oven, it's hard for us to get the crunch that you get at a lot of places that have a deck oven. Uh -huh. If you really want to experience a Chicago thin crust crunch, Basil's is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Their pizza is, is legit Chicago thin pizza. You will not be. Um, disappointed if you're if you're a fan of that style. I think our flavors are a little more bright, but uh, they're I, I can't compete with their crust. I just can't. I prefer Fair this. Enough. This is a, you can kind of fold it in half and. Bas sure. Basil's has a uh, very interesting pizza. It has uh, mar maraschino cherries and uh, bananas on it. That sounds. Cool. Uh, they brought it into the <laughs> studio. Cool. It sound it would sound so weird, but it was like it kind of works. Yeah, weird. that definitely <laughs> puts a twist on pineapple. For fruit on pizza. <laughs> yeah. right. That's a whole nother thing. Let's yeah. go to mm -hmm. what other tropical fruits can we explore? Mm. <laughs> no, I like the classics. The sausage is phenomenal. Yeah, so, it's it's a, it's it's you know not super multidimensional, but it's just like a sausage thin pizza, man. That's the thing for me, man. That's what I'm saying. Do you like spice? Like hot stuff? Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. Like I would like if the if I was eating this, I'd put a bunch of uh Chili flakes on it, so you know. What it's about a hot time. sauce? Oh sure, I I make a fermented uh, carrot habanero sauce. So, uh, that's really good. But I'll check out whatever you got, man. Oh, so those look good. we got the uh, the Tucson Tasty Show challenge, and we've got the uh, oh I'm being the, challenged the um, last dab ex. Experience, and that's with the uh, Pepper X. It's actually, it's really good. The pepper, um, it's not really hot, hot, but you definitely get the flavor of the pepper if you haven't had it yet. Cool. It's the hottest pepper in the world, 3 million Scoville. Uh, you don't need a lot. Um, and so it's then, basically tear gas is what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not, aer <laughs> there's no aerosol. <laughs> there, we're not going to aerosolize <laughs> this at all. And, and what I else? The, yeah, what's the uh, next I, one? I brought the uh, the one down from it. That's one, uh, this one's the Bourbon uh, Maple Reaper. Oh, yeah, that smells really And uh, this, one's, uh, this one's insane, um, but it's actually really tasty. Uh, I tried this one. And then uh, the next one that I try, it's Reaper, right? Um, but it has a little bit of uh, that um, sweet and spicy. Mm -hmm. right? it's, just, it's just good. Cool. I'll be uh, trying this off the air, so in case I start choking <laughs> or, <laughs> or dying. <laughs> Go to the uh, the Tucson Tasty Show <laughs> Instagram page to see Rocco try the yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, So you said you make a habanero fermented carrot hot sauce. Right. And I was in um, Santo Domingo for vacation a couple of years ago and I was like, I just got this hot sauce at the table and I'm like I was just parsing, I was like taking sips of it and I was like, what's in this? 
and the guy's like, I don't know, carrots. Like, you know. And so, uh, like, I I kind of figured out just from eating it like eight times what was in it, and then it took me like four tries, and I think I nailed it. But uh, I just make it for friends and stuff like that. But it's really good. Awesome. Yeah, that's well, cool. Um, we'll be right back after this short break. I'm Wesley Source, your host for the Tucson Tasty Show. Uh, special thank you to our sponsors, Kiki Rogers, Country Financial Insurance, Barrel, Premium Beef, Mafia Kitchen, Your Financial Guy, Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First Arizona, Arizona Hatters, and Allegra Marketing Print and Mail. And uh, I'm your host, Wesley Source. Stay tasty, Tucson. Welcome back to the Tucson Tasty Show. I'm your host, Wesley Soros, and we're here. Uh, we're on the, the home stretch, the final segment of the show, and we're here with uh, Cody Peck of Network Outdoors, Kiki Rogers of Country Financial Insurance, and Kiki's Keys. Stay tuned after, after the show uh, for another amazing episode of Kiki's Keys. And um, we're here with Rocco of... Uh, Rocco's. Hi. Rocco's Little, <laughs> Little Chicago. Little Chicago yeah. Pizzeria. And, oh, uh, and he is so, feeding us well. This is great. You know, and I, I didn't get to talk about it enough, but I mean, the sausage really does come through, and this is exactly what my grandfather would have made um, from, uh, it's just, it's sure. good. And um, Roma's, uh, Roma's Imports has always been uh, a staple in the family because that's where we get the jardinera from. Right. Uh, do you make your own jardinera? No, I get it from... Um, our distributor is Greco from Chicago, and I get uh -huh. like, and I get All their right. brand, and it's the it's the right thing. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. It's not it's not messing around. <laughs> it's tasty and it's spicy, right? Well, I love how you said you add, have the extra fennel and garlic added into that sausage, but it's not overbearing. No, it still tastes like just a good quality sausage. It you really know? does. You don't want it to taste like like licorice that's no fun <laughs> <laughs> Cody you're quiet over there you're just enjoying that uh, pizza I'm, I'm just eating some more slices of pizza over here that's enjoying great. it <clears throat> cool yeah what do you think of the uh, bourbon hot sauce it's good I think I've had it before with you uh, yeah. I don't know I, you've given me so many hot sauces I don't I, I I yeah I we have 60 I think we counted 60 wow and then uh, we just got three more because uh, we thought we canceled the subscription to Hot Ones. <laughs> and uh, three more showed up. So we have, I was like, I don't know what to even do with all these hot sauces. I think in the pandemic, a lot of people were like, and I can make hot sauce. Yeah, absolutely. And it just like uh, proliferated <laughs> overnight. There's yeah. some really amazing stuff happening with hot sauces. So, I mean, you don't, I, like, I, it was Tabasco or, mm -hmm. um, or, or Tapatio Chula. or, right. or mm -hmm. Durgi's Red Devil or Trappy's Red Devil. There's like, you know, half a dozen of. But it's all uh, a, like a repeat of the same hot sauce almost. Sure. And now uh, we have, we're spoiled with hot, with hot sauce because uh, they have so many complex flavors. And that's what mm -hmm. I like about the uh, pepper or the uh, last have extreme or experience. Um, it's it doesn't just burn your mouth out. You get the flavor from the pepper, and then you get all those uh, all the all those different things. Like a lot of overtones layers. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, same with this um, maple uh, reaper. I mean, it's spicy, but it's not you know burn your mouth out spicy like right. uh, like an art bark. Um, the <laughs> right. really hot art bark. It was like that's another one that I cried. I, my eyeballs sweated. Uh, I, didn't, I, I don't cry. There's a difference between just being hot for the sake of being hot and yeah, actually having flavor. That's no fun. Mm -hmm. That's right. no fun. Making it like you can make something as hot as the Scoville units of the pepper, and that's that's just you know you're just squeezing pepper juice, you know. Right. Yep. Yeah. The, dis the distilled capsaicin. I have all the respect for the people that uh, work with that stuff, but uh, I just oh my gosh. Yeah, that's not the point. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want to enhance the flavor of whatever food you're eating. You know? So what do you have that's coming up next that we can support you with? Um, I don't know. Well, th this this move is going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, we're still pretty busy. And we stay busy in the summer until September, October, or uh, until like late, late August, September, when everybody's just completely over the summer and starts staying in their house and, you know. And that's that's when the heat gets into your bones. It gets into your bones, and then everybody <laughs> and you can't get cold, cool. Yeah, and everybody's like already spent all their money getting clothes for their kids for school. It's just like a <laughs> the the back to school thing's disruptive too. So everybody slows down that time of the year. But we do pretty well in the summer, you know. Uh, I just yeah, I'm just glad to be on the show and glad. No, thank you so much for I'm, coming in. I'm glad yeah. that. Tucson has supported my business for so long. I mean, look, uh, frankly, it's one. Tr I have one trick. This is it. Thanks for <laughs> liking it, <laughs> <You> know, guys. <laughs> 
Well, we're so <clears throat> glad you're here. I mean, you definitely are a staple in Tucson and yeah, delivering it, some of the best pizza mm-hmm. in well, well, thanks. town. And it's, and it's great. It's great. You said you grew up eating my pizza. It's weird to be, I f- still feel like we just opened, even though we've been there 25 years. And right. it's just like, I just hired the daughter of one of my first employees that was oh a friend of mine wow. who wasn't even born when That's <laughs> humbling, isn't and it? It's like that it's just so weird, man, right. to be like that like an kind of an OG place now. Mm-hmm. But it's it's humbling. It's great and I just feel thankful that the community supported us this long. So I just I just don't want to screw it up. As long <laughs> as I don't screw it up, man. Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about on one of the breaks, you know, uh, for me, Rocco's was the pizza revolution in Tucson uh, because we had, you know, uh, the chain store or chain, chain places, right. but we didn't have uh, anybody that was doing pizza that they loved. And uh, you can definitely tell that you love what you do. And we definitely appreciate that. Thanks, man. We do. It, it we comes do. through in the food. I mean, uh, the, the amount of time that it takes for, I mean, the the different flavors and the complexities that you take or the, to, you take the time with on the sausage just shows. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, and, and look, everybody's palates have changed a lot since 25 years ago. I can, I can run specials now that nobody would have touched back then. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody's, we've all benefited from, uh, the, the food network and, and like cooking shows and, and everything. And it's like, we're reaping the whirlwind now, man. There's so many good places to eat here. The, the quality of chefs here is great. The the you know, it's it's just a lovely place to go out to eat. Speaking of your specials, what was like the craziest pizza you decided to just put? Like I don't know. I want to throw we, these things together, yeah, we, and it yeah. Worked. I don't know, man. We did a banana one once, and that didn't fly. <laughs> 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 Got to talk to Bailey. There he is. You were talking about the banana and maraschino cherry. Yeah, no, but yeah, it was like yeah. a, a savory banana one. Oh, oh wow! Which, which like, you know that works in certain cuisines, right? But like, it but didn't I wonder wo- if plantains, you know, fried plantains. Right, it didn't, didn't work. work. It, it worked okay, <laughs> but it, I didn't sell too many. Of those. <laughs> but you do, yeah. Um, you definitely do well with what you do. So, um, one or one last thing. I don't know if you heard about it or not, but they're actually doing a can uh, can food drive over at uh, Park Place Mall. Oh, cool! And, they're doing that today, right? Uh, they're doing it today. They're doing the build. Um, there's going to be judges uh, out there on Monday uh, morning to um, look every or look over everything. It's a ten by ten by ten, so they can do ten foot high, but uh, they have to use the cans um, and make a meal, and then they have to have a structure built out of it. Cool. And uh, so go and check it out uh, at Park Place Mall and um, bring in you know. Know, some donations uh you can actually do cast votes uh with donations and with a dollar and a half uh the the food bank can actually feed uh family for or three meals right That's yeah great. yeah they were talking about that that was definitely impressive blew my mind yeah yeah i did some work with a nonprofit, um and they would be able to do meals for as low as 10 cents that's so cool. That's incredible. Because they can take that stuff. dollar and spread it far more than you right. or I could. Right. And well, when, you, when you're talking about the bulk, like taking the, the food and being able to get the bulk amounts and the other stuff and things, right. it reduces the cost a whole yeah. lot. And I'm, I'm sure food insecurity is at an all-time high right now, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I used to, when I was first had opened and I was poor, I used to go to the to the food bank and feed my family, too. I know everybody's been there mm. or knows somebody who's been there, so... It's a great thing to do. Absolutely, and then mm-hmm. and um, we're going to be excited to be out there on Monday to walk through everything and check everything out and see where we're at. And uh, hopefully, maybe we'll see. Yeah, come by on Monday and yeah. walk up yeah. and uh, ask me for a sticker. Uh, get one of the Tucson Tasty Show stickers. It's not one of the hot sauce ones, just right. a regular <laughs> sticker. But uh, Rocco has one on his shirt. I mean, uh, which is awesome. Uh, they go everywhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> And yeah, Park Place is about as central as you get for the yeah. Tucson metro area. So, Absolutely. And I was hoping that uh, she would call in and we could chat with her about how it's going, but it must be going so well that she's too busy to she's call in for the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, but but they didn't hear it rained out today. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, luckily, no, it's, it's, in, it's, it's, yeah. it's, in, it's, it's in not an mall. outside okay. mall. It's an inside mall, so they're good. That's right. Yeah. That's good. They're and good. so you can go check out, you know, the the structures and then go catch a movie and then go over to the food court and see what's there and, you know, and just make a day out of it. Why go not? Go around one, um, right. go hmm? bowling, play some arcades. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because they have the... Uh, the round one over there. Yeah. The round one they over do. there. So, I mean, it, and they have an art, they actually have a theater. Um, uh, AMC, I think, or one of those. Yeah. Yeah, the upstairs theater is really cool. Yep. Yeah, I watched the Challengers there a few weeks ago, that tennis movie. 
Oh, Ooh. very cool. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's Are a you, nice theater. Are you talking about Century Theater 19? It's the one in Park Place. Yeah. Yep. So there's actually a uh, performance theater there as well. Oh, That's really? Yeah. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you got to go check it out. And uh, don't forget to, you know, uh, your dollars go a long way. So uh, go check it out and uh, vote for your best, your favorite uh, structure. Uh, check it out. And if you're there on Monday, uh, like I said, you see me in the hat, uh, <laughs> come over and I'll give you a sticker. Not a problem. And, and definitely <laughs> bring some canned goods. Let's help out those. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, those in need. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, we, we have about... 53 seconds left yeah. on the clock. <clears throat> Rocco's, will you deliver all the way to Marana? <laughs> uh, we, we will not. And we only do Grubhub these days, so, yeah. Fair enough. Take it up with Grubhub. Well, we got to Grubhub. <laughs> we got to get together for one of the uh, TV episodes of the Tucson Tasty Show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today in the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll see you next Saturday from 3 to 4, uh, where we'll have Brian Wong of BKW Farms. Thank you to our special guests and sponsors, Cody Peck of Network Outdoors, Chef Joshua Rocco of Rocco's Little Chicago Pizzeria, Kiki Rogers of Country Financial Insurance, Viral Premium Beef, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Your Financial Guy, Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First Arizona, Arizona Hatters, and Allegra Marketing Print and Mail. I'm your host, and as always, stay tasty, Tucson.